हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम आर्यन गुरु वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन हेलो इंस्टीट्यूट टेक्नोलॉजी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एड्रा इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी आर सीन हाउ टू कन्वर्ट द डब्ल्यू सी बी टू रिड्यूस बेरिंग एंड रिड्यूस बेरिंग टू डब्ल्यू सी बी ऑल्सो वी आर सीन हाउ टू कैलकुलेट द इन क्रा एंगल्स टूडे इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर ट्राइंग टू सी मोर प्रॉब्लम्स ऑन कंपास सर्वे so in this slide we are going to see the angular uh, units in which we are going to study the sexagesimal method of reckoning angles which is used in the british mainly for a fork angles are reckoned in degrees and decimals of a degree in this system there are 360 degree in a complete circle or four right angles each degree being divided into 60 minutes and each minute into 60 seconds so in a complete circle it consists of four right angles so in theoretical work angles are expressed in radians or decimals of a radian and there are two pi radians in a complete circle so here pi equal to 3.1415 hence 360 degree equal to two pi radians therefore 1 degree equal to 2 pi divided by 360 and it is equal to 0.017 radians therefore 1 minute equal to 2 pi divided by 360 multiplied by 60 and it is equal to 0.3029 radians similarly 1 second equal to 2 pi divided by 360 multiplied by 60 multiplied by 60 and it is equal to 0.0000484 radians and 1 radian is equal to 57.295 degrees and One radian equal to three four three seven point seventy four minutes, and one radian equal to two zero six two six four point eight zero six seconds. So therefore, in ordinary work, a radian is taken equal to two zero six two six five seconds. So this is the problem related to compass surveying, in which the traverse was cross traverse, and the corrected bearings were calculated as shown in the table. Similarly, this particular table shows observed and corrected bearings along with the correction at a particular station. Initially, if you consider the line D, you will observe that the difference between fore bearing and back bearing is exactly 180 degree. Therefore, correction at D is zero degree. Means the stations D and E are free from local attraction. Therefore, the readings taken from D as well as E are also correct. Therefore, the correct corrected fore bearing and back bearing of line D E they are correct. At the same time, since the fore bearing of E A is taken from station E, therefore, the corrected fore bearing and the observed fore bearing of line E A is also correct. Then we can calculate the back bearing of line E A by subtracting 180 degree from 330 degree 15 minutes. This slide shows the correction, how to calculate the correction, and how to identify the the which station is affected and which is not affected, and how to uh, proceed for computation of angles. So here the corrected back bearing of line A is 150 degree 15 minutes, but the observed bearing was 147 degree 45 minutes. So therefore, the correction was 150 degree 15 minutes minus. 147 degree 45 minutes. Therefore, the correction is plus 2 degree 30 minutes. So, whenever we are considering the observed bearing and corrected bearing, whenever we are considering observed bearing and corrected bearing, and when the corrected bearing is more the more than observed bearing, then generally the correction is considered as positive. Similarly, we have to proceed further. So therefore, corrected fore bearing of AB equal to 191 degree 45 minutes plus 2 degree 30 minutes. Since 2 degree 30 minutes is the correction which is taken at B, so therefore the corrected fore bearing of line AB equal to 194 degree 15 minutes. Therefore, the actual corrected back bearing of line AB would be, since this particular fore bearing is greater than 180 degree, therefore we have to subtract from 180 degree to get the corrected. bearing of that particular line so therefore 14 degree 15 min is the corrected back bearing of line ab but observed bearing was 13 degree 
here the corrected bearing is more and observed bearing is less therefore mm -hmm. the correction is positive so 14 degree 15 minute minus 13 degree it is plus 1 degree 15 minute and it is to be applied at station B in this slide we are going to apply the correction at B therefore corrected forming of B is equal to 39 degree 30 minute plus 1 degree 15 minutes therefore corrected forming of line B is equal to 40 degree 41 minutes so since this particular bearing is less than 180 degree, we have to add 180 degree to get the corrected back bearing of BC. So this is 220 degree 45 minutes. But the observed, observed back bearing of BC is 222 degree 30 minutes. Therefore, therefore the correction at C equal to minus 1 degree 45 minutes. So we have to apply this particular correction to the four bearing of further line that is CD line. So corrected of four bearing of CD equal to 22 degree 15 minutes minus 1 degree 45 minutes. Why here minus 1 degree 45 minutes? Because observed bearing is more than corrected bearing. So the corrected four bearing of CD is 20 degree 30 minutes which is tallies with observed back bearing of CD. There so D is free from local attraction which also tallies with the remark made at the beginning. So this table shows the computation of angles showing the four observed four bearing and back bearing, correction and the correct four bearing and back bearing and the remark. So this slide refers to sources of error in compass survey. The errors may be classified as instrumental error, error of manipulation and sighting and error due to external influence. Then we will see the sources of error in compass one by one. First is instrumental error. So in this particular errors, needle not being perfectly straight, the pivot being bent that is not being at the center of the graduated circle, the needle being sluggish that is needle having lost its magnetism, the pivot point being dull, the needle neither moving horizontally nor moving freely on the pivot due to deep of the needle, the plane of sight not passing through center of the graduated ring the vertical hair being too thick or loose. So these are the sources of error in compass due to instrumental error. Then we will see the error due to manipulation and sighting. It includes inaccurate centering of compass over the station occupied and inaccurate leveling of compass box when the instrument is set up. Similarly, imperfect bisection of ranging rod at station or other object and the carelessness of the observer while recording the readings, carelessness in recording the observed bearing. The next type of source is error due to external influences. It includes magnetic changes in the atmosphere on a cloudy or stormy day, then irregular variation due to magnetic storms, earthquakes, sunspots, lunar perturbation, etc. Variation in declination that is secular, annual and diurnal and local attraction due to proximity of steel structure and electric wires or lines. So these are the precautions to be taken in compass surveying. They are the centering should be done perfectly. To stop the rotation of graduation ring, the brake pin should be pressed very gently and not suddenly. A reading should be taken along the line of sight and not from any side. And when the compass has to be shifted from one station to the other, the side when should be folded over the glass cover. This is done to lift the ring out of the pivot to avoid unnecessary wear of the pivot. Then compass box should be tapped gently before taking the readings. This is done to find out whether the needle rotates freely then the station should not be selected near magnetic substances the observer should not carry magnetic substances the glass cover should not be dusted with a handkerchief because of the glass may be charged with electricity and the needle may be deflected from its true direction the glass cover should be cleaned with a moist finger so these are the precautions to be considered mm -hmm. while doing the compass surveying so whenever we are carrying out the compass surveying as well as 
chain surveying and then after getting the field of, uh, measurements it is necessary to prepare the plan so in this slide we are going to see how to use the field measurements for drawing the plan the plan is usually drawn on best quality paper a ruled margin of about 5 cm being left all around if unmounted drawing paper is used it is well because of the way in which paper expands and contacts with changes in atmospheric condition to damp and stretch it before pasting it round the edges to the drawing board with good paste corn flour paste the most commonly used scales for large scale plans you may use as 1 cm equal to 2 m 1 cm equal to 4 m likewise you may take any convenient scale depending upon the space available on the drawing sheet the other instrument needed are a drawing board weights steel straight edge compass with lengthening bar and pencil ink points beam compass pencil and ink balls divider drawing pens proportional compass set square t square parallel ruler large and small brass protectors french curves and set of railway curves since paper is very liable to shrink and expand a scale should be drawn at the very beginning at the bottom of the plan the survey should be plotted facing north so that left and right hand edges are as far as possible parallel to the direction representing true north and north should be at the top of the sheet the direction of true and magnetic north should be drawn in when these are known after having been penciled in the work should be penned in in dense black with best quality ink color may be used if desired to show water light blue roads light brown building gray or different classes of land or cultivation some of the conventional signs that are commonly used for large scale plans are shown in the figure that is in the next slide so here in this particular slide we are having the different convention signs so that they can be used while preparing a plan or a map of the locality so the deciduous trees are shown evergreen trees are shown woods orchards are also shown marshy or swamp locations are also shown rough pasture is shown rocks sand and shingle embankment cutting railway lines single li line double line path road rough road road unfenced bridge wall and gate house green house shade with open sides shade with closed side fence hedge concrete or brick drain earth drain then river canal with lock boundaries lake or pond so these are the conventional symbols which can be used to uh, identify or represent the ground features in the given area whose plan is to be prepared next we are going to see the significance of conventional symbol Conventional symbols are widely as accepted signs or sign system which signify an idea or concept. They represent different features on a map and are not drawn to scale. They are important because it is easier and more clear to use a map which has symbols. Symbol can be used to depict features like cities, roads, railways. A map is useless tool without symbols. Symbol convey the information provided by the map. the conventional signs and symbols are very useful to us it help us to locate the different signs in a topographic map it further help helps us to understand what that sign represent so whenever we are carrying out the compass surveying as well as chain surveying then after getting the 
field of uh, measurements it is necessary to prepare the plan so in this slide we are going to see how to use the field measurements for drawing the plan the plan is usually drawn on best quality paper a ruled margin of about 5 cm being left all around if unmounted drawing paper is used it is well because of the way in which so these are my references serving and doubling volume 1 kanit kulkarni and serving volume 1 dr bc punmeya thank you